What do you call it? Culture jamming, is it? You nailed it. Culture jamming. Jamming. Okay. Yeah, jamming the most absurd parts and trying to make it uh, seem real. Like, I like to mix. My brand of humor is mixing absurdity with reality. So you try to make the most absurd things seem real. Mm. And that's my combination for humor. Okay, so you you've done a bunch of these, and they've been really successful online. You've got, you've got a big following now. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you went to Las Vegas recently, and I want to show a clip of what you did in Las Vegas, and then we can talk about it and, and how it's devolved into madness. Watch. Wait, excuse me. You said your name was Alex Stein? Yes. Okay, thank you. What I'm saying is these casinos give people free drinks, and then they become vulnerable, and then end up gambling more money than they have. Yeah. And I was a victim of that, and I lost a lot of money. And I'm facing a lot of issues right now. My wife's boyfriend recently got her pregnant, and I'm here for a church event um, speaking. For I'm a member of the Church of Scientology, and I don't normally drink, but I'm very vulnerable. I'm in a position now where I don't know what I'm going to do because financially I'm going to have to take care of this baby potentially because he's out on parole right now and he has an upcoming case where he could be facing a long time in jail. So potentially I'm going to have to financially support this baby and I come to Las Vegas for a work event and I get fed alcohol and I get entirely way too intoxicated. I go to the ATM, I use my credit card, they make it very accessible to be able to gamble with my credit card. You know this Mary Goodman, they make it absolutely incredibly accessible councilman to be able to take all I have. And now I got to go back to Clearwater, Florida, and I have nothing. So after this, after I start drinking, I'm, 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 very, I'm very distraught. And the one good thing about this city, I will say, the one good thing is, I, of all the cities I've been to, it's the first city last night at 4 a.m. I saw multiple people on Fremont Street taking the vaccine. That's the only place I've seen a 24-7 vaccine uh, operation in the United States of America. And that's here in Las Vegas. I saw lots of people on Fremont Street doing the vaccine. And I, I want to commend you the one thing. No, I'm sorry. Uh, that's funny stuff. I mean, they you're and it's like it's interesting because you are uh, you're kind of known for really political type of stuff. A lot of times you're in there calling out kind of the conservative view on whatever issue. This one's really more just a, a cultural cr criticism of Las Vegas, right? Yeah, 100 percent. I was just kind of vibing with, uh, <laughs> you know, the shtick of Las Vegas, yeah. you know, almost like the hangover kind of was, you know, almost a little bit of an inspiration. And uh, just calling out, you know, they do take advantage of tourists with the gambling. You know, I've I've been over served and lost some money. I mean, I, I haven't blame lost them everything. as well for all my losses. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So yeah. Well, it's interesting because you, so you went there and you did this speech, and eventually they kind of realized who you were at, yes. towards the end of the speech, mm -hmm. and then kicked you out basically. Mm -hmm. Which I don't know if they're allowed to do. Are they allowed? No, to do that? and we're suing them. Yeah, uh, Michelle Fiore, we're suing you if you're watching this. So, and uh, Mayor Goodman is actually pretty nice. I'm not going to mention her in the lawsuit because she didn't kick me out. But you know, I know we only have a limited amount of time. But there is a proper procedure of how to remove somebody, and a council member cannot remove you. The mayor can remove you, and Goodman didn't remove me. This is similar to my case against Dallas County. Clay Jenkins, I'm suing them. They They've already tried to settle. We denied the settlement. We're taking it to court. So, yeah, do not mess with Prime Time 99. I got lawyers, money in the bank, shorty, what you drink. <laughs> so you're talking about Vegas. You're talking about, hey, they, they bring people in, you know, they get them drunk, they take advantage of them, which obviously is their entire business model. Mm -hmm. And you're also mentioning there ha happens to be a lot of people shooting up drugs in the street. Like, this is a problem. <laughs> yeah, and, and Stu, to, uh, that's the one thing, you know, I did want to bring up. When I was in Las Vegas, and I hadn't been since before the pandemic, because now I'm traveling because, you know, they've, you know, gotten rid of the mask mandate. But I'm telling you, I saw more homeless people there than I'd ever seen in my entire life, just mm. everywhere. I felt a little uncomfortable to walk around. And I was staying in downtown for an event. And downtown Las Vegas was the worst I'd ever seen it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's sad. Because it is, it, you can have good experiences in Vegas. I, I've had trips there. That I've had a great time. I've had some of the best times of my life in Las Vegas. Yeah. And the worst. So, yeah, and the worst, yeah, of course. Figure. That's, that's the city. <laughs> um, okay, so let me take it past this. So you, you do this. It kind of takes off as it usually does. Mm -hmm. And... It, this one, because I think because it's not overtly political and you're dead, deadpan the entire time. Mm -hmm. Some people see it like Dave Portnoy, I guess, and the people over at Barstool. They see it and they basically take it, I think, as serious. Like you were out there just had a bad weekend and you're trying to yell at the guy at the city council about well, it. What got their attention is Chad Ochocinco, the football player. I'm mm -hmm. sure you've yeah. heard of Chad Johnson. Yeah. He shared it. And, and he actually didn't even share my version of it. He Somebody screen recorded it. <laughs> and in that version, mine got a million, but this other person's got you know a million, even before mine. That's how it typically works. And so when they saw Chad Johnson post it, Barstool's like, oh, well, let's repost it because it's obviously popular. It's not political. If mm -hmm. Chad Johnson is posting it. Sure. It was up for about an hour. They quote tweeted me. It's, you know, getting all these hits, you know, all these hits because Barstool is such a big social media following. And then an hour later, they take it down. So I, t I just basically do a quote tweet of where it says when you delete a tweet, it says deleted by author. And mm -hmm. I just quote tweeted that. And all I said was, 
It's, it's such a joke that Barstool Sports would delete my tweet when Dave Portnoy is accused of some of the most heinous acts, yet they're too scared to keep my content up. But I know you're laughing, even though he's accused of it. The point I was making You did was, escalate that pretty quickly. I did I, escalate it, but I'm the I escalator. Mean, my, that's, I'm, that's mm-hmm. my middle name is the escalator. Actually, mm-hmm. it's escort because I get escorted out of so many meetings. But mm-hmm. that, what I'm saying is I was calling him out a little bit, but I didn't say what the allegations were. Everybody knows he's, he's accused of you know, sexual assault. There are, there are some accusations against mm-hmm. Dave. So... Uh, uh, he, as he typically does, does not take this line down. He gets very pissed off at you. Yes. And then it turns into this big thing. So how does he, because it seemed like their argument was they took it down because, what, it put gambling under a bad light or something, which, you know, again, I don't know. But they are a, a very large company that has a lot of gambling connections. Well, they're owned by Penn Gambling, which yeah. is a gambling company. So like, they went from a media company now where Dave Portnoy sold all of his stock in it. And now he's actually even admits he's an employee of Penn Gaming. So because they're a gambling company, they don't want to you know, highlight degenerate gambling. But at the right. same time, this almost kind of makes you not to gamble. I guess this kind of warns you not to gamble of the bad stuff. And they have all kinds of degenerate videos where people are you know, betting $5,000 on like a roulette and they win and they go crazy. Yeah. You know, so they show... You can highlight like, the degenerate gambling when you win. That's it's, easy. You, you can, can that's do okay. that. Yeah, but the yeah. degenerate gambling when you lose, no, that, that could cost them money. And so what he did is he posted it and he said that uh, you know, he called the out. He, he went and said, oh, the, you know, yada, 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 like a long post. And he just did a short one. He said, I effing hate Alex Stein, and I, I'm rooting for his demise. And then Dan <laughs> Crenshaw retweeted that. Right. Dan Crenshaw, a congressman. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm friends with Marjorie Taylor Greene. I'm friends with congressmen and women. But it, it just when Dan Crenshaw is getting involved in this, you know it's the zeitgeist, the collective consciousness is all involved in this stupid video, the stupid internet drama. Well, you've also had issues with Dan Oh, yeah, Crenshaw. Dan Crenshaw. I'm public enemy number one. Yes. No, Dan Crenshaw okay. hates me. He's had me escorted out of events. No, no, him and I have a history as well. But what I'm saying is you would think that he would be a little apolitical, not getting involved in a little internet drama with Barstool Sports and Alex Stein from The Blaze. But no, of course, Dan Crenshaw ingratiates himself in it. And then what happens is, is Dave Portnoy decides to invite me on his podcast. He's like, oh, Alex, sure. send me a message. I'll have you on. I said, of course, one. 100%. Here's my email. That would be a fascinating conversation. It would be a great conversation. <laughs> yeah. Talk about good content because mm-hmm. him and I disagree. And this is why, listen, Dave Porno did a lot of good stuff. He created, you know, that restaurant fund where during the pandemic he yeah. gave a lot of people. But at the same time, you know, that is a tax write off. But let's not get into that. Let's not get into that. <laughs> right. Let's okay. not get into the benefits of that. Uh, what, where I lost me for over, when they overturned Roe versus Wade, Dave Portnoy went on the longest rant talking about oh, yeah. how this is terrible, this is you know against women's health, and that's when he lost me because you know there's a few major issues. I can give you a break on a lot of stuff, but when you're a guy that's that powerful that has that big of a following, basically crying that little babies are going to live. I lose all respect for you. I mm-hmm. mean, that's just too big of a topic. I know it's you know important to you. Yep. It's important to me. I mean, how could you be pro-abortion when you have all that power? Yeah, it's interesting because, I mean, you know, look, Dave, uh, take out these sexual uh, assault yeah. sort of claims here. Uh, he's well known for betting every 19-year-old in Nantucket. Yes. This is sort of his, I mean, he, you know he brags about it. He's, the videos have come out. He's bragged about the videos. But you know he has released sex tapes. You can type in Dave Portnoy. I don't know if you know this. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yes. do remember the controversy. Yes, he has uh, so, sex so, tapes. You can Google it. Uh, or don't not, do that. Do not, not Google not. it. Do not Google Dave Portnoy's but sex I, I, tape. But what I remember about that incident, at least the one I'm thinking of, sex tape-wise, I don't know if there's multiple, but one of them was his response to it was basically to brag about how good he was at having sex. Oh, right? yeah. Like, he doubled so that's, down. that's the attitude. He doubles down. Um, so he's going through this, but he seems to get really irritated by this particular controversy with you. He deletes the tweet. He does not, uh, he's, you guys do not wind up having, uh, he does not, you do not go on his show. No. And then somehow G- our own Jason Whitlock gets pulled into this. H- how did that happen? Well, of course, because, you know, Whitlock's a friend of mine and Whitlock's all the drama and, and, Portnoy was getting ratioed bad because we were like, have him on your show. And, you know, that's where you get, you know, more response uh, from the people, other people tweeting your stuff than you. You know, so he was getting ratioed by me, by other people. And so Whitlock, who was the same, I think he had the same experience I did. He liked Dave at one point, And then he kind of realized, oh, man, he's pro-abortion and he's an elitist. And this is what Dave did. He sent me this message. And I said, once he, you know, took me off, decided not to have me on his podcast, I like, is it because you're getting humiliated? And then he messaged me back. He messaged me back. I don't oh. know why I didn't take that so nicely. I don't know. Well, well, and then he messaged me back. Oh, well, I'm not humiliated. I'm going to sleep very soundly on my $500 million. Mm. 
And then he takes a DM and he shares that. And, right. then on, and then on top of that, the next response was, and I go, well, the $500 million that you got from getting children addicted to gambling. And, uh, and he tweets both of those. He screens it, not me. Right, not I don't you. leak the DMs. He leaks he the DMs. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem is people right now are struggling so hard. You know, we're going through a recession. We're going through massive inflation. That's called stagflation. I mean, and then on top of that, they're hiring 87,000 IRS agents to audit any mom and pop that does a Venmo transaction for more than 600. Or a gambling transaction. Yeah, well, yeah. exactly. I'm just saying right now people are hurting. People are crushed at the gas tank. You know, the rent is skyrocketing. You can't even afford, uh, you know, a single family home this day and age. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't have $500. Yeah. And he's basically bragging about his money. And that's what I try to do is I try to call out elitism and hypocrisy. And he fell right into my trap. And all those people, when he was doing those brags like that, he lost a lot of respect from his own fans. Well, let me let me follow up on what you just said, because you, you mentioned all the things that are going on in the country and under the Biden administration. Uh, there's a lot of them. There's a yeah. lot of things, the inflation, the economy, all those things. And there's an argument to be made that like Portnoy, who's never been a conservative. I mean, he's never mm. I don't think he's ever even said he, he did interview Donald Trump, but he's not a conservative. He's you know, he's he's really a sports guy and he has his views on certain things. Obviously, sometimes I think he's right. Sometimes I think he's wrong, but he's not. Where we have a world where so many people are full direct enemies of what you think of as conservative values. And then you have other people like Portnoy, like maybe even Dan Crenshaw, who, Ted Cruz, you had a, a, yeah, a little bit of a, an issue with Ted, with Ted Cruz as well. Now, Cruz, I would say, you know, most things I think Ted Cruz does a pretty good job on. He's, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah Cruz I, is better I, than Crenshaw, 100%. Yeah. But these people don't, they have varying levels of. Uh, friendliness to conservatism, perhaps, mm -hmm. as opposed to the mainstream media who vilifies every single thing we say, as opposed to the Democrats who do it, vilify everything we say. Is there an argument to when you're when you're now you didn't pick the Portnoy fight by any means, mm -hmm. but like you like picking fights with uh, people all over the spectrum. Should, some people say, hey, Alex, we love what you do, but you should do this on the left. Don't don't blow up all of the people on the right, too. We need them. Yeah, I do. They get a little in trouble with that. They said shoot outside the tent. But, you know, I'm, a, I'm against globalism, and I think a lot of these guys that are giving money to Ukraine and these people, you know, they don't really care about what's happening in Texas. And you look at our border. I mean, our border is an absolute crisis mm. with, with sex trafficking and drug trafficking. So these politicians in Texas, I don't care what side you're on. I, I'm seeing Texas almost devolving. And then you see all these people moving in from California, and you see the people like Beto O'Rourke, who hasn't won an, any election other than city council. He's starting to get some, you know, some heat or some stamina, even though, and I think he just said that he's out temporarily with the viral infection. My point being is these politicians, <laughs> very few of them have our back because once they get in power, they want to try to appease everybody. Yeah. And that's not, that's not the politics we need to play. But to the one thing about how Portnoy is not a conservative, but he moved to Florida because he liked the, you know, the taxes and the regulations in Florida. So yeah. he's a little more conservative than he, you know, he's a, he acts like he's not a conservative, but obviously he has some conservative values. Yeah, it's funny because I remember hearing an interview with a, an offensive lineman years and years and years ago, and he was talking about how he got drafted and they're gonna, he's going to get this big contract. And he was he's like, I was in college, complete liberal, until I got mm. that first paycheck. Of course. And I looked at how much taxes they were taking out, and all of a sudden, I was really conservative. Uh, it's a fascinating thing. I don't know how you can keep up with it, because there's so much stuff going on. Do you have more? Of the, are, are there more videos uh, about to come out? Do we have anything on, on tap we can talk <sighs> well, about? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I have a lot. I'm actually going to be in uh, D.C. in September, so I'm sure there's going to be some drama. <laughs> and, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, you know, it's kind of my mama bear is Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's one of my good friends, so she's going to probably help me a little, give me a little assist. So I'm definitely going to be causing some drama in September in D.C. And I would Dave Portnoy, I'm going to be in New York City. I might not catch Dave, but I think me going to Barcel Sports is almost inevitable. So, oh wow, yeah. So there's so, going to be a chapter two, you know. And you got to. This is the thing is too, you know. Once you create all this drama, and this dust up, you kind of like got to let the dust settle, and then you got to reignite it. You can't just keep it going. You can't, you know. You got to let it cool off. And then you reignite it. Well, for anyone out there worried about Alex Stein going a little bit too far, don't worry. He's got Marjorie Taylor Greene right there. To yeah, keep exactly. Line. She's even crazier than me. And listen, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, that's one thing. These politicians, a lot of them don't have a sense of yeah. humor. I, Marjorie Taylor Greene, if she likes me, she has a sense of humor. That's, so There you go. Yeah, so you have to give her that credit. And then the other thing is, you know, I got to I gotta have some allies. When you have guys like Dan Crenshaw retweeting that he's rooting for my demise, <laughs> I'm happy that I have some people. So I love you, Marjorie, if you're watching this. I love the politicians that do like me. She's not the only one. I get messages yeah. and other politicians that follow me. But listen, in this world uh, where it's almost impossible to, to be political, it's almost impossible to take sides because of the identity politics, which has gotten so intense, that I feel like I'm on the side of the good guys trying to fight for America first or trying to put America, you know, trying to make America in a good light instead of tearing it down. I know, like you said earlier about, oh, you know, don't go after these people. 
We have to go after the people that I think that are destroying the, our country due to these multinational corporations that donate money through their political action committee. So that's why I'm not afraid to call out anybody hey, on any side. I don't care about calling people out on their own side. Yeah. I think that's the right thing to do. If you feel it, you should do it. Um, I have no friends, uh, politicians yeah. or otherwise, so don't worry about that. Alex Stein, Blaze TV contributor, a host of Conspiracy Castle, and uh, many new videos coming soon. <laughs> uh, plenty to talk about. We'll have him back on again. Alex, thanks so much for coming. Thank you, Stu. It's always a pleasure.